The first maxillary premolar of a 31-year-old woman had received direct pulp capping. During excavation of a deep caries, two small exposures occurred in both pulp horns. Dical was used as the capping material. The cavity was restored with amalgam. At a five-year follow-up, the tooth was comfortable and the pulp responded normally to sensitivity tests. Amalgam was successively changed with composite, and pulp taste gave normal responses over a period of 20 years. At the 23-year follow-up, the pulp responded normally to tests, but inspection revealed a crack line affecting both the mesial marginal ridge and the composite material. Removal of the restorative material and cast protection through a porcelain crown was recommended, but the patient declined. She returned after another four years, 27 years after pulp capping, seeking treatment for an abscess. The maxillary first premolar was now mobile and tender to percussion. The pulp did not respond to sensitivity tests. The diagnosis of pulp necrosis was made. Emergency treatment consisting of access cavity and debridement of the coronal two-thirds were performed. Canals were medicated with calcium hydroxide. Symptoms regressed in the successive days and after one week canals were reaccessed. Calcium hydroxide was removed by irrigation. and the isthmus connecting the two canals enlarged with ultrasonic tips. Working length was established at the apical constriction with an electronic apex locator. Canals were instrumented up to a size 50, strictly respecting the established working length. Ultrasonic agitation of the irrigant solution was performed. were finally packed with calcium hydroxide. The access was temporarily filled with IRM and care was taken to release the occlusal contacts. The patient presented after one week declaring pain to chewing. Inspection revealed that the tooth was split. Extraction was decided. A close-up view of the buccal root apex revealed that the main foramen was consistently short of the radiographic apex. This distance was found to be 3 mm. This was confirmed after clearing before paraffin infiltration. Longitudinal sections show that instrumentation had created an apical collar or apical stop respecting the apical constriction. Blood remnants due to hemorrhage during tooth extractions are present in the apical third. The apical anatomy shows no alterations caused by the mechanical action of the instruments. Cross sections cut through the middle third show that the canal was perfectly clean. The foramen of the palatal canal was found to be slightly short of the radiographic apex, with an apical collar created exactly at the apical constriction. 
cross sections from the middle third reveal the fracture lines involving the full thickness of the root at this level. The morphology of the apical canal resulting from the procedures adopted in this tooth should open the clinician's eyes when using electronic apex locators and establishing the working length. More information on the topic of apical limit can be found in the following publications.